finals. This is a momentous occasion for both teams because whoever wins this set is going to the main grand finals. On the panel with me, I've got Kunka and Gods. Welcome. I know you guys are excited. Oh, yeah. Kunka, ready to go. I'm excited um, to see not, how things go. Not well, ready to go, disappearing. This is going to be a pretty right. solid winner's bracket final. I think most people would consider ideally TNC to be in this position right now, but uh, anyway, I think Evil Geniuses are probably everyone's most likely pick to end up in the grand finals, probably through this match, but if VGJ managed to pull out some magic, then maybe they can make EG bleed more than just blue, but actually bleed red and show that they're mortal. Looks like you agree with that, Gods. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with EG being favorites. I think VGJ have uh, been good so far. They had a convincing first round. They had a 2-1 early thing against Spirit. Um, but ultimately, we haven't seen EG even be tested yet um, through the tournament. Uh, I think people looked at OG like big name, but with the stand-ins. If anything, I think teams like VGJ, Spirit, TNC may be bigger tests for EG at this event, because this is not the, the same OG that we're seeing in other tournaments because of the stand-ins. is the reality of it. I think, if anything, would you say the biggest challenge here for VGJ Thunder is EG's drafting? Because so far, they haven't had any consistent drafts. It's all been, it's all been different, very yep. unique. It's not what we normally see on the main stage, you know? So if you're VG Thunder, do you need to do the exact same that EG is doing, you know? Outdraft your opponent. Yeah. Right now, it seems that the main thing that EG, while the heroes are all over the place, at the end of the day, they're still picking three cores. They're giving Sumail a core, they're giving Fear a core, they're giving Artesia a core. While these positions are very unpredictable, while the lanes are very unpredictable, at the end of the day, it's still a greedy draft. So if VGJ are able to come up with some strategy to punish it, which it's easier said than done. Yeah, EG is always picking supports that can protect those lanes and core heroes. The cores themselves are heroes that aren't really susceptible to ganks and pressure as well. They're picking these PLs, these pucks, these heroes that are hard to gank, lifestealers, lichens, morphling, exactly. Um, so I think it's a tough team to go against. I think what, at least you don't no longer have this expectation like, oh, Sumail offlane, who knows what he's going to do. Expect to see Sumail mid playing a flashy hero. Uh, expect to see Arteezy playing a hard carry in one of the lanes. I guess you don't really know where he's going. Expect to see Fear playing a space creating pseudo core slash carry kind of no tail esque role where he's not really expected to carry the game, but he's expected to create space and move around the map a lot. And expect Misery and Crit to be creating all that space yeah. along with him. Speaking of the supports, so you always talk about the cores, but if you're VGJ Thunder, do you possibly hit the supports instead, considering how early they're very, uh, they are with their movements, getting ganks for their lanes, essentially winning the laning stage for EG? I think that's very key is to yeah, have a strong laning stage, um, perhaps try and uh, bands target yeah, the supports that EG have played. A lot of the Tusk has been uh, fantastic for them. We saw a really good uh, Elder Titan as well, but I think the Tusk has been by far Crit's best hero this tournament. So maybe, yeah, targeting the supports a bit, trying to outplay them in the lanes, and yeah, do as well as you can in that first 10 minutes if you want to take down EG. We'll have to see after game one what happens. I can't, uh, so I imagine that EG will probably take game one just because of all the unpredictability that we've been seeing, but if VGJ Thunder can identify something that they do well that EG didn't necessarily be able to punish because like you said, the roaming supports, like maybe you are the team that picks more self-sustaining cores that aren't so vulnerable, or if you want to match that aggression, you're like, well, I'll pick supports that are equally aggressive, and then your supports are going to have to follow mine around all the time. That's very true, even going for maybe strong lanes. Let's actually talk a little bit about VG Thunder, because I think a lot of us on the panel, we sort of agree that VG Thunder, they are kind of on the back foot, just because EG, they got that element of surprise. What are you really looking to in this first match if you're VG Thunder? Clearly a win, just to give yourselves a sigh of relief, but hero-wise, drafting-wise, playstyle-wise, is there anything that you're really looking for? Pick some Razors, I think. Heroes that are cores that will win lanes in these 1v1 type matchups, because that's what EG are often looking for. Uh, we've seen Fear in like 1v1 matchups where he has favorable matchups, same with Sumail often. So uh, pick cores that are going to be able to just yeah, win lanes, the Tinies, the Razors. Uh, I think Razors is going to be a key hero, something EG may want to ban in the first stage even. Uh, same, same, same thing with the supports as well. Pick like lane dominators as much as possible. Tsunami? Pick things that you're familiar with. Uh, I think OG kind of fell into a trap where they were maybe overthinking it. Uh, that game two seems like they outplayed themselves with the way that they laned it and how they drafted it. It's If you start off game one by being like, well, let's just try something crazy, then you go into game two and be like, that crazy thing didn't work, but what if we try something even crazier? You start out with something stable. 
start out with something that you're familiar with. If something that you've run in scrims before, something that your team is very, you know, you've exercised a lot of times. See where that faltered and then try to repair that. So let's actually take a look at some of these VGJ Thunder games that we did manage to see earlier today. They did show a couple of patterns here. They love their Omni Knight. We saw the surprise Weaver pick coming out from Scylla, which dominated the Brewmaster lane against DK Phobos, which was, I think, surprised a lot of us. You know, who would have, who would have thought that a Weaver would have done that well versus a Brewmaster? So maybe it's that sort of element of surprise. Last pick something that no one sees coming. Maybe they just play EG's game against them. I think, yeah, you, the draft is where they've got to get off to a good start. They've had some great Earth Spirit plays as well. I think two of the three games against Spirit, uh, they fell on that four position roaming hero. So again, looking at the four positions, banning out Tusk, securing yourself like a Earth Spirit, because that also stops Crit from playing it. So uh, I think the, the four position active supports will be a very hotly contested pick this game. Yeah, we've been seeing teams alternate. I mean, I, I felt like I had a pretty good handle, like, oh, this team, you know, they love picking two supports first, or this team is like, oh, they'll pick a support, and then they'll pick a core, or if they have second pick, then they'll just go for, like, a quick combination, like Clockwork SF Cogs that um, TNC had gone for. It was just Clockwork SF, quick succession. But I think now that uh, we're moving further along in the tournament, teams are having more data points to look at and see, like, okay, well, this is the kind of drafting trends that they go through. I, I think that... Honestly, drafting has been more important than ever before. Yeah, and we're seeing which cores are first to pick worthy. The Razors, the PLs have come out in the Tiny's, first to pick. Tiny, maybe not Tiny, and seeing as how yeah, it's it's recent been losing out, Yeah. So you just spoke about here is that we've seen a lot of. Would you say it's surprising that we haven't seen any much clockwork at all at Galaxy Battles? Um, a little bit. That was kind of a very popular four. Um, TNC still picking a lot or have a band against them because they do so much clock SF and Tim just plays clock all the time, but. A little bit, yeah. These days, you're seeing initiators get a lot of farm in the offlane, and so you're not really concerned about, like, well, Clockwork can initiate just with hitting level six. But other initiators, like, you got to get a blink dagger on that guy, but that's not really a big deal anymore. This is why so many offlaners, that's why you're seeing Sumail move to the offlane, but it's not really that big of an issue anymore to find initiation through other means as opposed to just a hook shot. Okay, so EG, they love running this tri-core lineup. How do you shut down a lineup that is so greedy and also scales into the late game? If I knew, I'd be out there right now. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that right now is a big question. I think on, a lot of teams on. are looking at EG's games and drafts and are like, huh, wh what's good about this? No team up until now has just consistently picked, like the tr this tri-core setup with no traditional offlaners, like these Omnis, Tides, whatever. Like, Magnus is. Like, these are what you consider offlane heroes. He's just like, nah, the idea of an offlane hero doesn't exist. Yeah, Lumi was talking on the previous panel that like, it's so much of an asset to have so many players that can play so many different heroes and any lane, any farm priority, you don't really need to think too much about like, well, I'm, I'm handcuffed to like these five heroes for this, hero, uh, for this player. You can be like, okay, I'll pick Puck. And then maybe fourth or fifth pick down the line will be like, well, never mind. I, did, I was thinking about a mid puck, but we'll, you know, we'll make it like a support puck or something like that. And so that kind of versatility is teams, uh, captains rather, they yearn for that kind of opportunity. You just make this so difficult for me, gentlemen. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, technically, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, not e difficult it's for actually us. EG it's that makes it hard for us. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually wondering, you know, what, is, what would BGJ be talking about right now as a team um, going up against EG? I think it's something that's often talked about is just focus on yourselves. Like, end of the day, EG's going to play their game plan. VG have to think about what does their best Dota like? What, what's VG gaming Dota look like? You know, it's something like Seb, OG's coach, said, you know, when in the true side was, let's play some OG Dota. You've got to play your style. You can't overreact to what your opponents are doing. Obviously, there's a lot of counters and potential draft wins you can get by based on what your opponents do. But at the end of the day, if you're not playing your best play style, you're not going to win the game. But sometimes OG Dota involves sending an Earthshaker dual mid with a tiny. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Uh, this is a stand in Dota. This is not OG Dota. Like, but I mean, I think for Vici Gaming, yeah, stick with what's, what's worked for with you. The Omni Knights, um, this more five man team fight centric drafts, these carries, uh, like these Lunas that have worked out well for them, these kind of more team fight ish heroes as well. Um, and I think they just they can't worry too much about what EG is doing at the end of the day. I want to hear your predictions as well for this set. Who do you feel like is going to take it and with what score? DG 2 0 <laughs> is I'll, my prediction, I'll I guess. I'll say 2 1 to be nice. 
but Bruce. is that Tsunami. really your prediction? Tsunami, <laughs> you need to be very blunt. You have a beard. Yeah, yeah it's going to be EG2. I was going to look free VGK. I mean, like, I mean, might as well just go to the lower bracket right now. Don't bother. I love your Walk character. Walk off the stage. <laughs> OK, 2-0. We're yeah. done. OK, so for the audience that's watching right now, who's <laughs> cheering for EG? A lot of EG fans in the crowd. How about t players, viewers, that are fans of VGJ Thunder? Who is cheering for VGJ Thunder? Come on, Freeze shouted you guys out in this player interview. Let's yeah. hear it. <laughs> he's okay. the next, yeah, he's the new Filipino child. They've adopted Freeze. <laughs> No, cheer Freeze on like he's one of your own. Yeah. That's, that's what we need. I mean, eyes, eyes will be on Freeze this game for sure. Uh, I agree. I, Freeze and Lumi had mentioned in the previous uh, series that Ao was kind of a little bit shaky in the first two games of the Spirit series, but that game three Dazzle was game winning, and I had absolute faith in Ao after that. Speaking of game one, we actually have some highlights from all of the games from today. So let's take a look at those to reevaluate the teams that are playing in the upper bracket grand finals that will be popping up in a moment. I actually feel like we need to re-look at these teams, you know? We can talk about it all that we want, but until we see them play again, we can't really make all these predictions, right? No, at the end of the day... it's too OEG. It's too... <laughs> we can make these predictions. I, I'll, I'll <laughs> you can and damn you well make these predictions. <laughs> Danny, he's, he's a control your panel, please. Control my panel. And by panel, I mean control tsunami. I might need to send you back from where you came from. Yeah. So, well, down, down here. Yeah. I, I don't want to go back here. Someone, I don't someone, like it back security, here. Security, please confiscate his box. Where did this box come from? What's, what's the contents of this box? Okay, we'll leave that there. <laughs> it's okay, you can stay up there, tsunami. Give me the highlights. I think we all want the highlights right now. I'll go through your song and dance. <laughs> Will you dance for us? No. No? Although Kunkka does have that taunt, right? He does, yeah. yeah. So, you, so you are Kunkka today, and you need to taunt for us. I don't know about that. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't buy it. It's like six cents in the Steam market. I don't have that kind of money. Have you seen this event? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So it looks like we're going to be getting the highlights a little bit later uh, on, aside from, aside from that, though. So anything else you want to say about these teams before we actually jump into the set? Um, I am looking forward to see how EG have to, if anyone's going to make EG adapt, and if that happens, like, what do EG do? Are they going to start picking those Tides, Batriders, heroes you expect to see play the Omni Knights, etc.? Um, or if they can just keep making this formula work? I think that, to me, is the, the kind of biggest storyline for me going into this one. I don't want to see them make this formula work. I want to see Sumail player offline. They said he would. They made a press release. <laughs> well, I mean, Fear was up there. He's like, nah, Sumail's back to mid. <laughs> I, wonder if, I think Fear would end up, I mean, he, he was playing like a safe lane underlord at Captain's Draft, I yeah, think. So I know. I, I'd expect Fear on that bat rider. But I don't, I don't trust Fear either. He was, you know, had arm problems and all that. And you see that reaction to those echo slams yeah, with his yeah. lifesteal. But actually, that was, that was incredible. You didn't actually think he would be able to make that quick of a play, considering you know how old he is as well. He's considered one wow, of the older just, players. You're just going out there, right? Right. <laughs> Old man Fear. None, none of us well, ever get to another Dodo event. <laughs> that's why we love Fear, though. You know, he's been in the scene for so long. He's even been in the the um, free to play yeah. video as well. He also gave his point of view. So you can tell that a lot of players they relate to Fear and they say, you know, I understand the situation you're in to a certain degree. Because let's face it, like 99% of the Dota population hasn't actually competed ever. He's Dota we're, family we're right now. We're all professional yeah. Redditors here, right? I'm, yeah. a professional, I'm a tier seven North American Battle Cup champion. Thank you very much, so. Oh, well done. All right, <laughs> looks like the draft is ready. So let's jump into game one of our winner bracket finals. I know you guys are excited. Much long awaited, but mm -hmm. here we are. So we've got a couple of bands on the screen as well. Chen and Omni Knight, two healers taken off the field. I'm not willing, like, at, at the second game of the OG series, I was like, this, this means nothing to me until I see the first two picks. And even with EG, yeah, like, VGJ, I may be able to get a slight read on OG. I thought I had a slight read on, and then they decided to lane it all crazy. But VGJ, like I was hoping, will awesome. ideally play it more predictable for the first two picks. Hmm. Well, yeah, I agree with you. You can already tell the Omni Knight, that's already a select ban versus VG Thunder. Because you saw, we both, all of us saw that VG, uh, VG Thunder, if they got their hands on the Omni Knight, that was a comfort hero. They were able to build around him, they know what heroes to go for, and that's a comfort pick. And I really yeah. feel like for EG, really good decision making. But is there anything here on the side of VG Thunder that you need to ban if you're evil geniuses? Take away their comfort heroes. 
I, we, I don't think there's any obvious comfort heroes. The Tusk is kind of like being the comfort hero for crit. There's been like a lot of PL, I guess. But I don't, it's like, are these heroes first ban worthy is kind of the big question. And I think there's no obvious contender for like a must ban hero against EG right now. Also, there's some Five overlap between VGJ's remaining. pool and EG's pools. Like both teams like Earth Spirit and you know, right now, VGJ have first pick. EG's if they want to first pick something like that, it's possible. Or if you want to take away strong supports like Shaman's still in the pool right now, VGJ yep. do end up banning Phantom Lancer. And I thought that that was probably one of the Good. comfort heroes that EG have shown, not only because they played it in the previous series, but Arteezy plays it, Fear plays it. I'm sure Sumail could play it mid, obviously. I don't think anyone could Ten not play PL, really considering how everyone's playing him, so. Yeah, but the secret is Battle Fury. Do you know how to pick, do you know how to click Battle Fury, or do you know how to click Diffusal Blade? Oh. Can I fear click the Diffusal That's Blade? That's true, he did. And then he clicked Aghanim's Scepter. <laughs> so maybe those arm problems are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Tsunami, I think we need to tone it down a little bit. I think you need to get off your box now. <laughs> All right, first pick of the game is going to be that Tusk for VGJ Thunder. So denying that pick from Crit, I believe that is a good choice, taking away one of his favorite heroes. But as you said, Earth Spirit is still in the pool if that wants to be picked up by uh, evil geniuses. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if that's the answer for a Tusk. I think potentially seconds, Elder Titan could be the better four position to play against the Tusk just because you've got such a good counter initiation for like Five snowballs. But we'll see. Similarly, you can also very much dodge Elder Titan spells with Tusk. Interesting. Evil Geniuses first ah. picking a Death Prophet. We have seen Death Prophet today, but first pick. It was first picked a lot I in the Spirit was. series I'm on day one. I like, thought it was first picked in the previous series. And in the previous pick, series, yes. yeah. So today as well as earlier in the tournament, I think this is a hero that Spirit kind of brought into this tournament as far as being a meta pick. It was like very prominent in that Five first Spirit um, best of three in some of their later series. So Radiant I think EG kind of looked at that or maybe just from their own play were like Death Prophet really strong. Also really strong with Earth Spirit because there's such high kill potential with a roaming Earth Spirit and Death Prophet mid lane Spirit Siphon Crypt form a lot of nuke potential. What are the pros and cons of picking up this Death Prophet first? You already did the pros and cons on the stage. <laughs> are we allowed to keep doing that? <laughs> Death Prophet first stage, like the con that I mentioned in the OG series is like... Was that you got invited? Seconds remaining. It's that Exorcism is a very high cooldown team fight ultimate and ideally you can punish that by quicker, more combat oriented heroes oh, like Tusk and like... Bad. Medusa. Not like Medusa, but I mean, I guess that also Not works. Not cooldown dependent. Not cooldown dependent, but with Mask of Madness business, Medusa fights earlier than most people would expect. Yep. So EG handled Medusa just fine in their previous game, so, so not a hero they're necessarily worried about. This time they won't have a PL. Ten and seconds we'll have remaining. plenty of time to perhaps respond to it with their three picks remaining. Actually, Five what's a way to deal with a Medusa when the PL is not in the pool? What are the alternatives? Uh, you look at all the mana burners is one way, of, of course. Um, Something that always surprised me is how Invoker Radiant just completely like back. got forgotten. Like a lot of people kept picking like Nyx mm. Assassin, oh, and then geez, once everyone realized that the mana burn scales off of Int, and Medusa has just a mana talent that doesn't affect Int, everyone was just like, oh well, I mean Nyx Assassin is not that great anymore, and then. Time to rebalance. Yeah, maybe. And then Coddle was like kind of seeing some play, but even yeah. that fell off. But I don't know what happened to Invoker. He used Quaswex, to be a hero. Quaswex Invoker is a Ten hot seconds. pile of garbage. Yeah, that's true. That, uh, stay out of Five any game. Fair remaining. enough. But I mean, Exord is, itself is very volatile. You need to be like having set up in other lanes to get kills, and it plays very greedy. So I think Invoker is really hard to play right now. Uh, speaking of mana burn, we're not going to have an anti-mage in the pool, banned yeah. out by VGJ Thunder. Yep. Worried about one, number, the one, number one hero that burning mana right. taken off the pool. It's one of those things where AM, yeah, good against Medusa. Obviously, you burn mana, you, or you're a counter pick, but then you've got an AM, and like, AM is not considered a very strong hero, plays very slow pace, but the fact they ban it out suggests VGJ Thunder are looking at a slower, more late game oriented game here. Uh, also, the Dazzle gets taken out of the pool here for Evil Geniuses, so they, are, they have done their research. They do know that VGJ, they do love running that Dazzle, and AO played a phenomenal Dazzle, although he did, as you said, had four bodyguards. It's kind of hard to get back there. Uh, yeah, whenever Spirit were running that Aghanim Scepter Luna, it, like, it didn't seem that useful, but that's because Dazzle was never in it, and so AO knows his positioning very well. We'll see if he picks another hero that can protect this Medusa, like Shadow Demon still in the pool. I don't know if it's in their pool, but if you ban out an anti-mage, that kind of says like, I'm all in on this Medusa. Because sometimes you're seeing like dual core setups where you'll run the Medusa and then you have like a tiny making space for her, or even a Phantom Lancer making space for her on occasion. But 
if you ban out an anti mage, that makes it feel like we're just going to have like four heroes that don't really scale well in the late game, but Medusa's going to scale like crazy. Okay, Batrider banned out, waiting for VGJ Thunder. Uh, VGJ Thunder is banned. Anything you expecting here from VGJ Thunder? Do they focus on another mana burn hero, or do they go for maybe a support to start targeting Misery and Crit support? Although Crit technically already has the Earth Spirits, you want to start yeah. targeting Misery support. I think Misery's support is too wide open. Target the Arteezy heroes, and Razor, I guess, would be the Arteezy hero here. I think they very much already targeted him. PL, Anti Mage. Um, there's the Morphling in the pool, which we saw played earlier. That was like a last pick. It felt like it also feels like a hero that maybe isn't that good right now, although it fit that game particularly. So. Ten we'll see what Arteezy ends up on this game with uh, a lot of his heroes banned out. Yeah, so there were two different remain. approaches that VG Thunder could have taken. They could have targeted the cores, or they could have targeted the supports. And it looks like the decision in game one is going to be banning out all these cores, which EG has a very wide hero pool, so you can try, but yeah, they're going to get you. We You'll might never need, get them all. We may need to request a 15 hero ban versus EG. Yeah. Just the only team, the only exception. Everyone else still gets the standard six. I mean, we shoved them in the captain's draft and <laughs> didn't seem that unstoppable then. <laughs> yeah, that limits the, the pool perhaps, but Warlock Misery's played this at least twice in this tournament. I think he played it today. Played it today, yep. Um, obviously seconds. offers good team fight counter initiation. It's like the perfect hero to just be this tri lineup, you need supports that can sit behind the, these greedy farming cores and just keep them alive. You've got heal, and when it comes to team fights, you've got rock, which is used to more counter initiate than start a fight. They're not looking for their supports, uh, at least misery supports to start fights. They've used it both ways. They've actually played it aggressively and defensively, and in those matches, worked to great success. So, for all we know, maybe evil geniuses. Do you think they could play aggressively with this lineup to have the warlock as setup along with the earth spirit, or it'll, do they keep it as a defensive mechanism? It'll depend on the core they pick for either Fear or Arteezy. Because warlock, you know, he doesn't have a stun. No one really skills up uh, upheaval early. If you don't have nukes, then fatal bond's not that useful. So why bother sending the warlock to walk around all over the place when you could rather get him a quicker level six and have him protect a vulnerable core because Shadow Ward's heal is amazing and the offensive capabilities of zoning out an offlane are also great. Waiting for this third pickup by VGJ Thunder. Going for a lot of reserve time as well, down to 40 seconds yeah. reserve time. It's good. That's what I want to see. I want him to think about this. Oh, seeing the AA <laughs> again. Yeah. It got uh, Warlock and Death Prophet, so there's two heals now. We saw OG pick this after in response to the Death Prophet in the first two, which Honestly, it was a fine pick. There was nothing wrong with picking AA there. Ooh, Evil Genius is picking up a Spectre. First does, one of the tournament. Does Spectre go Battle Fury? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a legitimate I have seen question. Battle Fury, yeah. I know. I think it's actually, I mean, it just seems to be the carry build. Go Battle Fury. But against a Medusa, though, I think you can still afford to go Radiance. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, Radiance is the alternative. I think the idea is against Medusa, you do want to go a farming item, because otherwise you don't keep right. up in farm. So yeah. if you're not going Battle Fury, you go Radiance. I don't think you can go for some, like, Diffusal Vanguard no. fighting build because you get out farmed. But then you shouldn't pick Spectre in that context regardless. Like, if Spectre is Spectre's clearly a response pick to Medusa. Yes. And so Let's... you picked a hard carry to go up against her hard carry, and... It, tough Spectre pick because VGJ Thunder do have the, I guess, they hadn't picked their offlane, so they get a Legion Commander, which is a very strong oh, laner here that can bully really the Spectre a bit, so... They played it today as well. They're very confident with this pick, it seems. And the, the pick wasn't even that optimal in that previous series. Like, Legion Commander kind of fell off, in, even though VGJ Thunder came back off the back of the DK, who just farmed out of control. Legion Commander was kind of losing relevance, and yeah. this game, I could kind of see that happening again. Like, Warlock and Earth Spirit, they're pretty good at making sure that duels don't fully complete or even get initiated, especially with Spectre Ultimate. If she does go for Radiance or just, you know, right clicks from Haunt, Legion Commander, I think, will have issues. But, I mean, VGJ Thunder made it work in the previous series. Waiting for these last bands here. So, looks like for now, yeah. EG looking for an offlane, unless this is some offlane Spectre I would, shenanigans. I would ban some like Life Sealer against EG now. Yeah. That, that seems like the kind of hero a, they a would want. A self sufficient want. core, like a, a DK or a Spen. A fighting core of that fear. It's likely Fears here, the last pick. That is, I mean, it could be the Spectre, which, if they doing the Spectre, doing like a Vanguard Diffusal field, it's more likely to be Fear yeah, playing it and then pick up another carry. That would be pretty interesting. Oh, actually. EG ban Life Sealer. I thought that was a hero they might want, but. Does okay. EG. I know you really hate this hero, Gods, uh, but does Fia possibly go for heroes. a... You, you do hate... Off, hate you heroes. hate Marana. You hate oh, yeah, Marana's garbage. <laughs> so there we go, there we go. <laughs> no, nah, Marana's support's okay. Wind Ranger? No. 
I, I just don't see I don't see Wind Ranger enough in, in games yeah, to have an opinion. Well, just a hater. Wait, is. Tinker, you said you ban out Tinker. Yeah, all right, no, no. It's a good hero. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. If you're VGJ Thunder, you just roll the dice, say, let's ban something which we think is hard to play against. But yeah, the fact that like you proposing the idea that it could be a Fear Spectre, that would be a real, a real cog. Pick like a morphling, like we saw last game. You know, put this. Do like Spectre is a hero that with some stat, like go like a drums, a vanguard, defusal. You can play much more space creator. You you're very cooldown dependent because you rely on Haunt to set up kills, and that's when then you've got Death Prophet and Spectre, two and Warlock, three very cooldown dependent heroes, which is a concern. And that's where I feel EG's last hero is better, being that constant fighting presence, which life still kind of fits. Maybe they have something else in mind. Uh, they don't want like another big cooldown here. The thing is, would have worked. Like against a strategy like this, then you're like, okay, well, let's like push early, yeah. and that's why DK last pick is good because right now there's trash can push for BGJ Thunder, but a DK kind of helps that a little bit. Yeah, that, that seemed like a a strong hero overall. Something EG likely knew would have been coming up. Yeah, I mean, Thunder picked it last series, so yeah. I mean, they even said in their Ten post game seconds. interview, you know, we like DK, we win a lot with DK, <laughs> we felt good. Easy game at the end, I think was that. I don't know if they said that. He did. He did. I saw the interview. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I think Eric coaxed him into it a bit, but it was definitely an easy game. Eric there. coaxed us into a lot of things, yes. so I don't that know if that is a very believable. Thank God help me. We love him for it. <laughs> okay, Whoa, so. Did you pick an off lane? It's RT as a Tidehunter? I mean, that has to be it, right? Because there's okay, no wait, way Sumail is playing Tidehunter. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. It's fear time. Yeah, okay. okay. What EG have picked an offlaner? This is monumental. Like, what, what's going on here? I didn't it's realize men ate fruit. That was, that was a bit of a thing. But, well, we did see Lacoste, who was complaining yesterday that we haven't seen any watermelons. So we uh, actually get one okay. today. Okay, I was, so. I was trying to work out where you were going with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's Sumail. They're swapping around. All right, well, they may swap again. Don't look no. at me. <laughs> look at the draft. No. <laughs> We don't know who's going to play what. Well, it says EG Sumail is Tidehunter. It says is Tidehunter. It, it said EG Fear is, and then they yes, said I know it, it did, said EG. but now it doesn't. So, so is this an offlane Sumail at last on an, a standard offlaner? Uh, EG's would, playing the long con. They don't, no one knows what they're doing. Okay, I know Lacoste as well as Lyrical. They are excited. I want to hear your predictions very, very quickly. I mean, I, I mean they could have done it. Hurry any. up, Sumail. It's, it's EG. It's EG. It's EG. EG? It's easy, easy, G. Easy, G. Yeah, EG. EG. We've got two for EG, going to go over to our casters right now. Take it away. I know you guys are excited. Let's do this. Thank you so much, Danny. We are excited. Lacoste, it's happening. Upper bracket finals. Winner is going to the grand finals. It's EG versus VGJ Thunder. My man, how you doing? I'm doing fine, man. We're in for a treat. We have the best region in the world against the China. Oh, man, calling it out right away at the very start. It's, it's going to be a really exciting match. Um, like the panel was saying just a second ago, currently it is Sumail that's holding on to that Tidehunter. Um, I, was, I was wondering that when they came out there as well and they were all standing in a line together, Sumail was standing in the middle. I was wondering if there's some subliminal messages going on. But uh, what do you think about the drafts? Uh, Iji has a lot of big ulti cooldowns. They have, what, one, two, three, four, actually over 60 seconds ulti cooldown. So they're just going to play around those cooldowns. They have a really good Roche lineup. Um, uh, they were talking about uh, the build on Spectre. But actually, the Vanguard plus Diffusal Blade might be, might be the build here. Or if you want to go for something different against Medusa, he might go for Battle Fury uh, just to catch up with the farm. It's crazy that we're like talking about Battle Fury Spectres being a legitimate build nowadays. But it, it kind of has come to that point, hasn't it? Well, I played a pub with uh, Black like a month ago. He, okay. he went for Battle Fury, actually, on, on Spectre. How, did you win? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was won playing Tidehunter, that's why we won. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have Tidehunter as well in this yeah, one. Yeah, have a combo, winning combo. Yeah, it's, it's making it happen. Um, and that's the big thing, is we do have a short little pause as everybody's getting ready to hop into this game. Um, but the other thing to kind of keep our eyes on in this is the aggression that can come out in that off lane. We saw that there's a Legion commander that's been picked, uh, going to be going against the Warlock. That can be kind of a rough matchup sometimes for the Warlock. Yeah, because of Presti attack, I mean, Spectre is... Uh, super weak at early stages, uh, so Warlock's not gonna do anything. He can get rid of uh, uh, spells from Warlock, so it's gonna be a good Legion Commander game, especially with uh, DK being their uh, safe laner. Oh, is that a yeah, thing that's yeah, happening? Yeah, uh, Siler's gonna do it. So wow. They'll, they've been playing it, playing it for quite a while. So with uh, DK's self-sustainable hero, so 
the two supports can roam around, even help Legion Commander on the top lane to secure the Blink Dagger early on. Yeah. I like that idea. That sounds pretty nifty. Um, there's a little bit of chat going on. The team's trying to get this started. But yeah, that's the thing to kind of keep our eyes on, I think, in this game, is how this Spectre is able to accomplish stuff early on. Because this is a hero that, as you said, can be weak in the laning stage, can sometimes just get ran at really early on. And even though they have a Medusa, which sometimes lacks that initiation capabilities, Dragonite can run around and make stuff happen, too. Well, uh, last game, he always pretty much goes, when he plays uh, Dragonite on a safe lane, goes for that Shadow Blade after just the Power Threads class build Magic Wand into yeah. Soul Ring. He, he can be on the lane, can't get harassed because of the natural region from from the Dragon Blood, plus all the items. All the items. Yeah. He gets them all. It's a lot of farm there. You know, I was casting a lot of the South American games that were happening, um, and we saw a lot of Dragon Knights in the safe lane that kept on losing. I'm not going to lie. It tended to be like this thing where you drafted the hero early on, and you thought it was going to go mid, and then they had to change up their plans. Do you think that that's the case here, or was this always the plan to put the Dragon Knight safe lane? Not necessarily. Uh, I've seen seen it in China. They first picked Dragonite and then they decide whether they want to put him on a mid lane or a safe lane, depending how the matchup goes. That's why they banned out uh, Timbersaw. If they have a hero like a Razor, you don't want to have that matchup. Okay, sounds good. Well, we're getting a little bit of word. It looks like there's an issue with the TeamSpeak servers on VCJ Thunder. There were a little bit of problems at the start of it as well with some of their settings, so it seems like uh, they're getting those resolved currently. Um, other hero to talk about, you had a lot of love in your heart for the Ancient Apparition leading up to this. You're yeah. saying you thought more people should pick it? Yeah, we had a little chat uh, like a two hours ago, Why? what happened to AA, why he's not picked anymore. Uh, kind of disappeared, but uh, this game is going to be good against uh, DP. Uh, even OG had it in the previous game. It was a, it was a good pick. Yeah. I like it a lot. I feel like this is going to be one of those games, too, where if the Ancient Apparition is able to get off to a good start and can sort of, you know, pull the lanes a lot, they can get some extra experience. Um, I guess, is there any real great contention? Like, how good is Tidehunter at trying to mess that up? Uh, messing up what? The, the Ancient Apparition's lane. Like, is he just going to run on in there and try and, like, be able to do anything? Or, like, DK doesn't really take any extra it's harassment. Gonna, it's it's going to be a good lane for Tidehunter. Yeah. AA can't really bully him out. Um, Tidehunter just needs, uh, may maybe he decides to pull. Oh yeah, the little pull thing, and then he can do the taunt as well, the little backstroke. Well, you have a Dragonite level 1 as as your safe laner, he, you're really not threatened by him. Yeah, I know, that's the, the big issue. Um, sometimes you end up seeing like fancy things with like a fissure that can block the way, make sure that the uh, creep camp isn't capable of being pulled. Um, a little bit harder to make that happen with a tusk. Um, do you think that we see Tusk in the mid lane most likely, or is he going to be roaming around? It looks like he's starting with a Quelling Blade. The Tusk? heck? What? Who? Oh, wait, no. I'm <laughs> apparently, it's bugged out and I'm clicked on Dragonite. I was very confused for a second. He's got Orb of Venom. Excuse me. That would have been a little weird. Well, so, I mean, Dragonite uh, doesn't have that much uh, base damage, 53. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so... I was talking more about... I thought I saw the Tusk with the Quelling Blade there. But, I mean, do you think that he, the Tusk is mainly going to be mid, or is he roaming around too? Once uh, Tusk get level 2 and level 2 AA, they, they can actually get a kill on a Tidehunter. That's really? The, okay. They can with the... Uh, that's a guaranteed cold feet with the uh, Snowball plus Shard. They can get a kill on him. I mean, it's really hard to stay against DP, who, right. who really doesn't care about the rotation. Even if you go in with a Tusk, you can just Spirit Siphon two of them. That's the nifty part about it, right? That's one of those heroes that just always has uh, a pretty solid lane. Still, no updates. They're trying to fix the mic issues that are going on uh, with the players inside the booth. Uh, so we will be bringing you the action as soon as that comes up. But another thing to sort of talk about a little bit, um, as far as EG is concerned, do you think that this is sort of going to be a continuing thing where you switch off the players? Sumail played mid the last couple series. Now he's playing in the off lane. Is that hard to do as a player? Uh, for him, I don't think it's a, yeah. it's a big deal. Uh, Liquid kind of started that trend back in the days. Uh, it was very successful for them, so just swapping mid and uh, carry. Nowadays, we see a lot more of those. So if you want to play in a tier one team, you need to be versatile. Super versatile, yep. and that's the, the name of the game for these guys, really. They play in all the positions. I mean, it's not like Sumail forgot how to play mid suddenly. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that uh, probably in his pub games, more often than not, you're going to be seeing him um, probably till taken mid every now and then. Universe died for this, so he needs to actually <laughs> play play the offlane, so people will be satisfied. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's always an interesting little trajectory, seeing the way that that stuff works out. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else that we can really chat about as far as the uh, early movements go? The laning setup. Is there any yeah, lane so that far, really is awful? So far, it's uh, zero zero. Uh, <laughs> VGJ has an upper hand. Yeah, they've got about a thousand gold leads. Less, less than net worth, less than thousand net worth, because they bought items. That would help them yeah. out a lot. I like that. Take notes at home, everybody. We do have a couple of uh, all chat things that are going on as well. We've seen that um, Arteezy is spamming good game, and we've got all heroes missing. Crits is giving a little sorries there to the chat as well. So a little bit of local flavor um, coming out from the boys in blue. But yeah, what I was sort of asking about though is like, is there any lane matchup that's just abhorrent, like something that you do not want to run into? Who is going to get dumpstered the most in the laning stage? Where's the danger? I think uh, Spectre's going to have a hard time, especially if Tusk uh, focuses on, on top lane. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's not much kill potential on a mid with uh, Medusa. She doesn't deal that much of a damage, especially against uh, against a DP. Well. We're going to end up going in for a second. Well, we're trying to get a little bit of word for production as to what it is that's actually going on. Uh, we still do have a little bit of time before it's going to get started, and we're getting the ready call right now. They're letting me know that we're starting, and the game is unpausing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with it. Philippine Arena, the Philippines in general. Are you guys excited to watch game number one, Upper Bracket Finals? happening live right now. Go to the game. I believe in you. We're doing it. Yes. Oh, we're in. It's happening. No. no. <laughs> God, please, God. no. <laughs> it's happening. Oh, man. It is fine. Ladies and gentlemen, all fine. Can end BRB AFK. Woo. Our well, the positive side now is we actually get to look at some of the, the heroes here. Yeah, you don't we're have not to look on at the screen anymore, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Problem indeed is the call right there. Um, yeah, you know, it's always nice to get a little bit of a look-see at the heroes as they walk in. Maybe you can get to do the hero introductions and the player introductions also. But uh, let's see. We've, I think we've covered all the lanes. We've covered all the players. What about uh, coaches? Oh, there's a good one. talk about coaches. So we have ROTK on side of VGJ Thunder, one of the most experienced players in the Chinese scene. Absolutely, and you, you also have yourselves um, on the other side of things, Mr. Bulba, Bulbarino. What a guy, what a man. He's, I saw him today, he was wearing that X Games hat again. Yeah, I saw him at the breakfast, had a little chat with him. Uh, always has that unique style. What's the style? Uh, I don't know how to, how to call it, but it, it's pretty unique to me. You know, it's I, Bulba I, style. Bulba style. Oh, it looks like we have a player stat on the screen as well here as Ao there. Played a lot of Marana, Rubik, and is that OD? I'm not sure about that one. Um, Something green. Something green, exactly. That's what it is. Why, that's actually Viper's ulti. <laughs> Viper's ultimate ability. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, the thing, though, that I was going to say about it is I, I, was, I was having trouble earlier trying to figure out the way that you... Um, you distinguish between Storm and Thunder, and I was realizing if you're an ROTK fan, you know that his voice is very thunderous. He's a loud person in general, I think, and that's maybe how you could distinguish between yeah, the two. Yeah, I think uh, even though they have a captain, ROTK is doing all the draft for VGJ Thunder. Oh, yeah? I, I, he took it. <laughs> Remember that there was a couple of tournaments where he ended up actually taking the seats of his players. Oh, we're ready. It's happening. Oh, Dota 2 is going to get played. Thank you, thank you, crowd. What a, what a great crowd. Gotta love it. And pause again, just kidding. <laughs> so moving out now, it looks like they're going to maybe try and force a 1v1, not wanting to run into the issues that come around with a Warlock against the Legion commander like we are talking about. So it seems like what they want to do is have a Tide Hunter as a safe laner against the Legion commander. They do not want to have a matchup that we talked about that the Spectre is going to get bullied. And we have a pause, and I'm not kidding this Ooh. time. Lodi, Lodi. It's happening, everybody. 
You know, this is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. The game will get played no matter what. Eventually. And, you know, we're here. We're hanging out. Go is the call. Oh, Silar. Thank you very much. We're back in it again. You know, if it happens at the beginning of the game, that's okay. It means that it's not going to happen at the middle at and end of the game, right? Yeah, exactly. You, you get them out of the way early. It's, it's good. It's yeah, a good that's, uh, that's PMA. That's what every Dota player needs to have. Absolutely. Well, down here bottom. I don't like know why I don't have it. <laughs> you got to work on that, man. It's the way to be. Absolutely. Crit. Arteezy, Fear, they're going to come over here and secure themselves a couple bounty runes. Looks like Kama as well. In case anybody is wondering, this is, of course, uh, previously known as Freeze. Um, he's changed his name over, I think, a while ago at this point. Um, but going to be playing the Medusa, and we'll see if they decide to give him both of the bounty runes. Looks like Siler's going to take one for himself. So they're not, they're actually swapping the lanes. They're putting a DK against a Tidehunter. Hmm. Because they, did they see? how they're laning? They might have caught eyes on it. They do have this one ward that's down here and spotting out Sumail. So realizing that might be what they want? They might swap swap uh, the lanes. They want to have that Legion Commander. Oh, fear. In trouble. Playing in the mid lane and getting ran down early on. Is he going to be able to get out of there? The heal coming through the right clicks. Oh my goodness gracious. Not enough though. The Spirit Siphon plus a heal from Warlock was enough to actually keep him alive. Oh, misses a roll boulder on bottom lane. Yeah, Yang still living for the moment. He ended up taking the uh, moment, moment of, of courage as opposed to the press the attack there. He well, he's going to flask up and going to be good. Nice. Lane's going to push. And once he gets uh, level two, another roll in. Okay. No way to do it. They're chasing here as well, but. Yang, knowing the limits of his hero, is not going to end up going yeah. down there, it looks like. He needs like. to be careful about uh, using the flask because of the spectral dagger. Oh. Oh, misery still living here in the mid lane. Where it looks like a lot of the action is going to be taking place bottom and mid as they go in again. Crit able to find him, but the turnaround, he might have gone a bit too deep. He's still living through this, though, as Yang continues to trade hits with Arteezy. Oh, they should have waited the Legion Commander to get level 2 to have that overwhelming gods. The extra damage from the creeps. They had like seven creeps. Well, a good amount of action early on. 1v1 top shouldn't end up amounting to any kills, I would imagine. But bottom lane with Misery coming in, is this enough to start putting the real amount of pressure onto Yang here? Yeah, Spectre had a good start. She was sitting on 10 CS. Uh, oh, that's a ring actually for Spectre. Queued up. Oh, yeah, you're they talking did. about it. Either Battle Fury or a Vanguard build, as I mentioned. Well, a lot of trading hits there as well. Top lane, they're pushing the uh, creeps underneath the tower. Sumail gets hit with the Dragon Breath and trying to just uh, deny out whatever he can from Silar. Yeah, but this, this is a fun matchup on top. Both of the heroes have ability to reduce the damage. <laughs> I mean, Tidehunter is better because of the lower cooldown and less mana cost. Off the watch and wait. Dragonite already finishing off that soul ring. It's back in base if they wanted to pick that up a little bit later on. Yang down here bottom, farming up. And you know, this is a, a really superstar uh, offlaner in a lot of ways. He's been a key member of a lot of the teams in China. Showing his stuff here as he's taking a little bit of a beating. He needs to be careful. He does still have that salve as well. Spectre have. Oh, he's going to hit him. Oh, oh, no. And now the roll-in. They were thinking about it. Crit doesn't end up dropping the boulder, so he doesn't fully commit for it. Press the attack. Meanwhile, over here to the side, Fear, very low in HP. They're going to be able to find the kill. Fade drawing first blood. I'm not sure if Fear should be that low against the Medusa. OK, there was uh, an AA there, was he? Not yeah. really. Nonetheless, they now moving up top, and it looks like they want to try and put the hurt to Samuel. You were talking about the guaranteed cold feet. I'm not sure it's going to be enough to actually kill a Tidehunter with a magic one. Well, they're chasing. They're going. They're able to catch him. The cold feet does not proc, and with that, they won't be able to find it. Bottom lane, the dive is coming in for Yang. As Crit is here as well, another roll in seven seconds. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. Another flask brought from Legion Commander. That was, that was a big mistake to actually use use Flask in, uh, in a vision of a Spectre. Yeah. 
I mean, there's nothing they can do top. It's pointless for VGJ's uh, supports to be there. Even if they get a kill on him, it's not really big of a deal. They should pressure the Spectre on the bottom lane. And it looks like that's what... I mean, they can still get a kill on mid now with two versus... Th actually, three versus one. And watching the roll-in that's going to be there. They find the shards. Fear in trouble. Going to get caught. And most likely going to go down again. 0-2 for the old man. Spectre has that ring of health. Enough money to actually buy boots. But the problem is uh, Spectre that was kind of dual laning slash tri laning is not getting a lot of XP. But she's still sitting on the top of CS. They, they should really help out Legion Commander. I mean, Legion's having a pretty great time for herself, honestly. Uh, considering he's been tri laned and dual laned a lot of the time here and still getting a decent amount of CS, getting the levels. It looks like they're bringing in that tusk. A Hastern is also here to the side for Misery and Crypt, but that means that Spectre is all alone as the rotations are coming in. Are they going to think about this? They might think of uh, getting a kill on mid with Earth picking oh, up the Hastern. There's the snowball. The dagger is out, but Arteezy trying to run. Nowhere to go. Ends up falling. And, well, they need to get something out of this Hastern. Kama, level four. Inside the river and looking for the opportunity. They're going to end up kicking him back in. Well, there's going to be the catch as well, the roll, the slow, trying to bring him down. Medusa, very tanky. The snowball, able to keep him alive for the moment, but is he not going to end up being able to get out of They still find the kill. Reported. And Crypt just ran away. Someone's going to get reported for that snowball. I think he could have actually lived if he just kept running. Oh, no. Well, three to one, and so far, EG dominant. Yeah, the, the thing about the uh, offlaners right now, I mean, as offlaner, I mean Tidehunter and DK. Uh, Tide will have much more influence because he has a TP and a Ravage, but uh, DK TPing to a lane will not uh, accomplish anything. They, they need to get a kill or two before. Uh, Siege creeps just spawn, so if they want to pressure the tower with the uh, Dragon Form, they should. Okay, DK is actually TPing bottom. Interesting. So. Maybe anticipating that rotation coming in. Silar is there with Ao. They just want to pressure the tower. Siege creep is here. Level six comes out. They get the slow. They get the breathe fire. They hit the tower a couple times now. And is there going to be a rotation? Crit's going to be here as well. It's a good amount of damage onto this tower. Yeah, siege creep still full HP. Half of the duration on the DK form. And how do you deal with this? Because this is going to be the roll and They want to try and take down Siler. They do manage to kick him back underneath the tower. They have a Shadow Ward, but this DK is so freaking tanky. He doesn't even care at all. Well, Dagger goes out. Two points in it right now, but as soon as he throws one more of those Breathe Fires, everybody has to back off. Yeah, Legion Commander is about to hit level 6. So when she gets it... She can make a rotation. That they can't kill a tide hunter on top. I mean, it's uh, only level one kraken shell, but I don't think they have enough damage to kill him. So are you supposed to be some and, well, meanwhile, the rotation comes in. Snowball forward as misery caught, going to be killed. Artizi just has to sit there and look at it. There's not a whole lot the Spectre can do to stop this. I mean, it's a warlock and the Spectre. They're like super static. They can't make a move. If they want to. Try to kill someone, they need Earth Spirit. Yang. They do have a Ravage available with those stick charges if Smell wanted to go on it. Over here in the jungle, Crit and Fade running into each other. Snowball able to take that bounty rune and still man it up against this Earth Spirit. But it looks like they are not going to go for it fully. Considering that Fear died two times, he is having a, a good, good time on a mid lane. Same CS as Medusa. Medusa actually moved the jungle, has a couple of stacks. So they should rotate someone on the mid lane to get the XP. Well, that's the thing, right, is that you take a look at the CS and everything looks kind of okay, but taking a look at the net worth, it's almost all of EG at the top. The only one who's having a really good time outside of that is Silar, And the rest of them kind of even, but... We'll have to wait and see how the next couple minutes unfold as the smoke gank is coming. Fear is here as well. They run into this Ancient Apparition, going to try and slow him. The run in, that was never going to be a TP completed, as they're going to be able to bring down Silar most likely in just a couple of seconds here, and probably do some significant damage to either the stack or the tower. 
I'm not sure they can take the tower. I mean, if they want to fully commit, that they might need to have a tight hunter on the bottom lane as well. Yeah. Oh, while this is happening, mid Radiant is taking a little bit of a beating as well. They're starting to rotate in, though, heroes. Fade is here. They're bringing in more shards, catches onto two. It's a pretty good one. Overwhelming odds as well. They do have duel, but it's scary to do that in the midst of all of this damage and misery. Trying to TP away. Yang got body blocked there for a second. Does find the nice. duel. Cool. They're managing to catch him, and that's going to be a dead Arteezy. Now looking for crit. They're slowing him down as well with all of those procs from the ancient apparition. Killing spree for Fade. This early point in the game. As I pointed out, they stayed for way too long. They don't have enough uh, damage. DP was out of mana. It's uh, Vorlock, who's level 5, and the Spectre, who's also level 5, so she can provide the vision in the fight. Tidehunter is, uh, meanwhile, pressuring the top tower. It's uh, deniable. Ah, nice stun and deny. <laughs> Outplayed. Uh, Silar showing his stuff now. I'm going to try and get into is range. Is going to use the oh, Ravage the to get the rune? <laughs> no. That was pretty sick. Does he get the other one as well? Misery is here. Sumail may be a little bit upset about the situation, but they're going to be able to push it back. Silar, well, he might be paying the price for his insolence a little bit earlier on. They find the full kill here, I believe. Maybe? Yeah, he's dead. Holy, that, that Dragonite is so tanky with just level 2 Dragon Blood. They used the uh, haunt for that as well, down bottom. Yeah, when you're playing Legion Commander and uh, you get the first uh, dual damage before 10 minute mark, it always feels so good, man. Absolutely. She's uh, 1, 0, and 2. Not uh, too close to a blank dagger, but uh, she does not need it. The heroes of EG are not that mobile. Well, and this is a, a player that I think not everybody would be fully familiar with, but Yang was known on a lot of the teams that he played for to be carrying out of the offlane, and Legion Commander is certainly one of the heroes that can do that. Yeah, especially against a hero like a Tide Hunter, they they have that lockdown yeah, if they want to focus him. Ravage Sumail, a little bit upset about the situation. They're bringing in misery as well. They get the Shadow Word. No, Kama just walking away, trying to get out of there. They're slowed down. There isn't a tower nearby, and it is going to be the shards not quite able to separate. Yeah, that uh, level one upheaval actually making a difference there. Uh, often not thought of as a great spell to get early on, at least in the recent times, but showing the value of it right here now. Smoke up, mid lane. Phase boots, no blink. But if DP walks too far forward, we'll definitely be punished. I think Fear knows something is up. Uh, they're not showing the on a bottom lane. Do we have a stack, one stack? They are pinging the stack again. Gonna stack both Ancients Die. at the same oh, time. Same goes for crit. Oh, man. Radiant's bottom yeah, that's really nice. Although that one didn't want to cooperate, Ancient Thunderhide. Uh, but yeah, Tower getting pressured down here bottom for free. Not really a great response yet. Yang is going to move in now and might be able to find a little something something. Arteezy trying to run away. The rest of his allies are here though. If Yang gets a bit too far forward, they're going to be able to find the duel. But can they get the turnaround? A Blast coming through as well. It's going to connect on it too. But they're able to drop the Golem right onto all of their heads. Yang trying to run away. They managed to reapply the Magnetize after it got taken off of the press of the attack. Silar going to kill off that Golem, but Yang does the math, stays alive. Wow, this, this guy is really good at math, the calculation. Uh, they did not have enough damage to actually get the duel. I mean, it was only AA, yeah, Misery is going to go down. Wow. Well, again, a flurry of action, and the end result is tower brought down fairly low mid. It's going to take some damage here. They don't have a glyph available. Well, the top lane tower went down as well to Sumail. Oh, fear. Comes in, takes it down. Yang, though, moving in the area. The Ice Blast is not on the mark. Kama trying to pull him back into it. It's not going to happen. They do have a duel again, but that's just a dead Medusa. Brought down again, 8-5. to five. If that AA ult connected, he would use a duel on her. Crit hanging out in the woods for the moment. Waiting to find an opening here. But this nothing is your, Yeah, this is your classic Tide Hunter, top one on the network chart. Yeah, you love to see it. Drums hood for the Tide. Oh, Spectre is going to farm out these Ancients. Tusk just kind of hanging out in the woods as well. He has love his level six. And the smoke gank is going to come. It looks like they're going to run into Silar, who's just now TPing away. Really unfortunate there for EG. 
Spectre is actually going to go for that Battle Fury. So they want to have something secured for the super ultra late game. They, they don't plan to take many fights. Even if they do, Spectre is going to deal a lot of damage in, in those fights with the Battle Fury. Is that something where you see it and you feel like you need to make stuff happen, like run at that Spectre and Ganker over and over again? Not, well, yeah, if you're VGJ. Yeah. I mean, you have Medusa, so I think both teams uh, are feeling comfortable going into the late game. Oh, is this going to be a smoke underneath the ward? It's a bunch of heroes grouped up together, and Yang jumps forward, able to find one. Fear stuck around a little bit too long. The Ice Blast goes through, and that's just going to be a dead DP. They had eyes the whole time. Yeah, no, no duel, sadly, for Legion. Pretty, pretty even game so far. Silar slowed down. They've got the fatal bonds. The chase is there. Crit finds the stun, the silence as well. And Silar, well, press the attack and takes off the magnetize. Able to get that extra little bit of range. They wanted to ravage for this. Arteezy comes in, they're saving the ravage, realizing they can find the kill without it. And Crit, make sure that, that one's secure. Yeah, this is going to be a real problem once uh, EG groups as 5 or slash 4 with Spectre ulti. They can uh, split push a lot with it. Just trying to force a fight, play around their cooldowns. Tidehunter still didn't use the Ravage. I mean, when you're playing against the Tidehunter, it doesn't matter uh, if he's going to use it. The best thing about him is, is the fear of using uh, the Ravage, so you can't uh, group up. Well, and, and using it if they need to early on to secure the kills, like that one kill that happened uh, a while ago on the DK, but it doesn't have to be in the big fights. They did manage to clear through a lot of the stacks. Sumail able to take out the one last large creep that was there. And Medusa staying sort of on parity with the rest of the heroes, as it looks like, well, Sumail, even when he plays off lane, he's the one that gets a lot of farm, as Arteezy ends up going down to Yang in the jungle. Blink Dagger revealed. They already saw the, the Blink Dagger before. He's sitting on 1.2k. Fade. Spots out Misery here. They do have a Golem, don't want to have to use it if they don't have to. And that looks like Misery is, well, Crit comes in. Nah, he's dead, he's gone. Walking forward for more. They try to reinitiate the snowball dodge. That was pretty sick for Fade. Able to turn this one back around. They try and drop the Ravage with Fear here as well. They're going to take them both down. EG making something out of nothing. A double for Fear. Yeah, the both supports dying uh, on each team, but uh, he popped Exorcism. Yeah, and Ravage. Yeah, DK has Shadow Blade, so he can just uh, continue to push on top. Has Dragon Form ready. Dyer's top tower. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate series of events there for EG having to expend all those ulties. They don't have Haunt either for a little while as Silar just going to continue to pummel away at Arteezy there. And Crit gets the dust, the roll forward, they found him out. This guy thought he was safe in the shadow, but he might just be able to right-click Arteezy to the ground if he's not careful, but the rest of the allies here, EG cleans up the mess. Ice Blast. That was close. It doesn't matter. He, he was kind of too deep. I was just expecting him to use the Dragon Form, use a couple of uh, hits just to deal damage on the tower with the poison attack. Well, and still, all of the hopes and dreams right now resting in this Medusa's hands as really aggressive build from Death Prophet, Blink Dagger. Oh, yeah. Because one of the reasons is I mean, he can blink out is fast enough when Legion blinks in. But it, you need to be super ultra mega ready for that. Quick not, not if AA hits you first or overwhelming gods. He, he's gonna need that Lincoln Sphere. Fade, magnetized, throws out the shards as well. But Sumail with the haste is gonna track him down. Walrus punch, trying to run away. Fade ends up falling nonetheless. Fear? Oh, he's going for it. Silence is there. The haunt comes out as well. They want to chase here. Jason. Arteezy, though, going to have to run away from there as the golem gets dropped in the mid lane. Kama is caught. He's trying to TP out of there and does manage to get away. So, again, another couple of big ultis used and not much accomplished. Yeah, M Medusa has level 4 uh, mana shield, so she is really tanky. They did not have the Ravage there to pop it. 
Well, it's kind of an interesting dynamic in this game, though, right? Because normally you think, all right, big ulties are down. We can go, we can farm, we can we can fight if we want to. But with EG, these four heroes, they all have big ultimates. Yeah, so <laughs> at least one or two of them are going to be ready for the fight. Yeah. Oh. All right, Dark Duel, though, scan. potentially coming. A good scan from the Dire scouts it out. And that should put the kibosh on the aggression. Nonetheless. Kibosh, you say? <laughs> It's a word? What are you doing? I, I'm not familiar with the word. What does it mean? Kabosh? It makes, it means stop it. Like, you're questioning of my vocabulary. No, no, no. I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to learn a new word, man. I'm with you. Now, Battle Fury Spectre into Radiance. Is that greedy or is that just, is that smart? What, what, what's your thoughts on this build here? I think that's the definition of greedy. Yeah. It could be smart, though. Sometimes greed is good. Well, with the Radiance, the missed chance from uh, Medusa, Dragonite, Legion Commander is going to do a lot, but uh, not sure how she plans to survive in the fights. Or survive in the jungle. Fade spots him out. Silar's there as well. The snowball. They got the catch. They got the walrus punch. They're going to have the dragon tail in just a second. It connects, and they're bringing her down. Spectre going to end up falling. Come on, the mid lane. They end up taking down the Dusa, though. Down bottom. Ravage used, and over in the jungle, Misery running away from Yang. They do still have dual, but couldn't Command connect. Echelon. Simultaneous action at the time. I mean, again, carry for a carry before it was uh, trades mostly uh, support for a support. Yeah. Misery level nine has the double gloves into the hand of Midas queued up. Classic. That's nah, pretty. Pretty classic build on Warlock. No surprise there. Yeah. It's when you click uh, Gloves of Haze, then you click uh, Shift into Midas, so mm. it, it leaves Gloves. It looks like right now Vichy J wanting to try and take advantage of this build, attack. and the Spectre is Arteezy moves in, just use the dagger as well. They're gonna snowball forward. Yang is there also. They're gonna be able to find him, and this is gonna be another quick kill. Winner is the call for Yang. They turn around with the Ravage. They don't hit, though, with the Anchor Smash. Trying to run away. The TP is going to be there. Yang Shards is going to live through it all. That Sigil making all the difference in the world, and they get out. There was no follow-up uh, anything from uh, EG after uh, the Tide Hunter popped an ultimate, and it was also a reveal Blink Dagger for, for a Tide. Oh. He Jigen, has a dust. Jiven, getting away for the moment. Pops the BKB, just gonna run away. Silar realizes that he's safe. So, Lacoste, I, I mean, we've talked a little bit about late game. You've got a lot of potential with this Medusa. How scared are you right now for EG? Do you think that they're still feeling okay at this point? Well, right now, Spectre does not uh, feel like a hero. Like, she's only providing vision for a Tide Hunter to jump in and. Uh, get a good Ravage. Yeah, and I guess also recognizing that spec the uh, yeah, Radiance is doing kind more. of a bad build, so he swaps to the Fusal Blade. I mean, that's great against Medusa, obviously. That's a mind-blowing fact right there. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Uh, I still love you, man. Uh, you there's a double BKB on the uh, side of VGJ. One on Legion Commander, still not revealed. One is on cooldown. Uh, on a DK for 20 seconds, they sh okay. Dyer knows something is up. So yeah. In, in, in that game where uh, Sumail played top. Zeus, every attack. time they used smoke, he always popped an ultimate, so they could not smoke. Same goes for this time. Uh, the smoke timing is, is perfect, but uh, not on point uh, where. I mean, it's like they were a little bit ahead of EGJ, actually. Arteezy's just going to back out again, realizing that it could come. And instead, it's down bottom, where the action is going to be starting to happen. They haunt in, but able to get that four staff away for the moment. All the ultis in the world drop now onto Kama. Going to pop that ultimate in turn. The snowball safe, maybe going to be able to turn it. Is she going to be able to lift all that? No. But they do take down one in return. Death Prophet gone. Maybe going to be able to find Arteezy as well. Yang tried to juke through the tower, but going to be able to find it here on the other side of the trees. Arteezy Easy gone. It's all falling apart right now for EG. Is he gonna TP? He has a snowball. Oh, they got him yet again. Misery is gonna drop as well. Yang on a wicked six streak, and BGJ Thunder came to play. 
Yeah, we, we were talking about uh, how it's going to be a good Legion Commander game, and, and it is. That was um, kind of shocking to me that uh, EG decided to go for that play. I mean, it's a Medusa near Tier 2 tower, and the uh, Tidehunter was not there. And again, it's only a 3,000 gold lead right now. You take a look at the difference in net worth and experience, and it is starting to feel, as you can see right here in the replay, uh, the, the chase forward, it just they couldn't kill him quickly enough, and after that, it all fell apart. Meanwhile, up top, Fade and Sumail squaring off. There is also a crit in the area. Silence comes out, and well, it looks like crit, or rather Fade, is going to... He has a blink. Oh, get, oh good earn. There's the attack right away. Oh, he put what? himself on the wrong side of the shards. Wow. Uh, it was a nifty play, but not nifty enough. All that effort for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's sad. <laughs> yeah. Fatal Bond's damage, 5% for the Warlock. Talents that you don't often see since this hero isn't played all that often. And well, it's not going to help him here. Just a quick duel, and Yang will eat that up every day of the week. Legion Commander might want to go for uh, Shadow Blade, might even upgrade it to, to Silver Edge, or that, that, that's a good, uh, good item, uh, because he saw Ultimate Orb on that Prophet, so he knows she's going to go for a Lincoln Sphere and needs something to pop it. Just now completed as well for Fear, so at least for the time being, we'll have answers to that Legion Commander duel. The problem is all the rest of these heroes are pretty integral to the team fight for EG as well. They need these heroes to be able to be alive and throwing out those skills, and they can all get dueled. Earth Spirit Blink Dagger going to be online for crit. If you look at the items on side of EG, they have three Blink Daggers, which is pretty unusual. You don't want to have that, that amount of daggers. It's uh, 6,000 gold just for, for the initiation. Yeah, and then they've got other avenues to try and get into the fight also, but it's what are they doing after that initiation? All right, they, 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 the they want to take a fight. There's an Arcane Room for a DP, so they might want to try to go for Roche, which is a uh, kind of eh choice. She wants to pop an ulti, that's level 3 exorcism, actually. Yeah, this is a nice little timing, but we're going to see how many times have Do they know? EG run into issues they in know. the Roshan pit there. Getting ready to move over this direction. Kama moving in, but I think it's happening too quickly. Maybe not. AU drops down the Icy Vortex. They see all these heroes in here. They're moving in. Silar. they end up going for the haunt. Fade able to find it. They haven't killed off Roshan yet, though. Yang taking a ton of damage. Sumail is able to take the Aegis, though. So the big win comes out from EG as Fear is going to continue to chase, trying to take down Yang. And the four step up to the high ground, actually living through that one for the moment, able to blink away. Even when it's bad, it's good. BGJ get out with only the Tusk dead. That's not so bad. I mean, you have a Tide Hunter with an Aegis, not the ideal. Usually, you want to give it to a Spectre or a DP. I mean, he had to pick it up uh, because otherwise, uh, Tusk would pick it. Yeah. Y you don't think about it, but uh, Sigil is doing so much work. Not just about the scouting, but uh, also reducing the the damage, the move speed, and uh, attack speed, especially yeah. for the heroes uh, like a Spectre. Definitely. And that's those heroes that you need to do the extra damage with. And um, it's not sometimes enough just the extra. And Silar, his ulti just wore off right now. Gush to reduce the armor. Chase is there. Yule Scepter lift up by Fear. The stun follows. Do they have any other form of getting him out? He's TP's on cooldown anyways, but Tusk moves his way into it now as well. They've got the Ravage. Silar pops BKB, thinking that he can still get out of this one, but he's fully blocked in for the moment. They don't have a way to make it work. Fade Snowball trying to keep him alive. Silar still looking to run away from this. This guy is tanky as all get up as they have another slow on him. His Shadow Blade off cooldown shortly, but he is going to fall. Yeah, another bad move by Tusk. Uh, first he blocked himself, now he blocked uh, his teammate. Uh, DK probably was not expecting it, so he did not want to pop a BKB to, to not get ravaged. Yeah. Very unlucky there, and well, EG streaming back again, and with that Aegis in hand, granted again, it's on the Tidehunter. They might try and do something here. Yeah, I was talking about the uh, Silver Edge, maybe on... Uh, Legion Commander, but uh, DK has one. Just to remove the Kraken Shell from Tidehunter, or Spectre's uh, Desolate and Dispersion, which is really good item this, this game. 
Well, again, it is really a story also of Sumail getting so much on this Tidehunter. He's level 20 right now. He went for the minus four gush armor and then also the reduction. I'm wondering, like, is this one of those games after he finishes off the Shiva yeah, story? Yeah, I'm gonna it? gonna say it. Yeah, that, that could be the build. It's kind of a crazy one, but... Well, Aghanim's is uh, one of the items on Tidehunter that uh, you want to have him, but there's always a better choice. Hmm, gotcha. Well, and Arteezy, after a couple of deaths after he got the Battle Fury, has basically been left to free farm and has the Diffusal Blade done. Level 17, Yasha into hand as well. This could be a scary timing for Vichy J yeah, Thunder. The level 20 talents on side of EG are so good. 500 health for Spectre and also 500 for Death Prophet. Yeah, it's kind of insane how much sustainability that's, that's almost a thousand got. hp huh that, that is almost a thousand hp as a matter of fact pretty Radiant close to it misery mid lane it looks like vgj again want to make some type of a move but it feels like they're always so static and stuck together whereas you look at eg's team and they're all spread out around the map farming the jungle and kind of just getting what they want the advantage is only 2k. Medusa just hit level 20, almost 21. Uh, sh so she's gonna be really hard to take down with uh, extra 800 mana plus a Scotty finished. Yeah. Top lane, Smil again pushing this out. The rest of EG nearby, ready to jump in if anything gets a little bit too scary. As Shiva's guard is done for Sumail, he's gonna move back in as. Medusa just jumps out again, and now it's Vichy J that are the ones that are sort of defending and simultaneously pushing across the other side of the map. Radiance top tower. Yeah, they want to use that Aegis. Uh, when, when you have Spectre in a team, you can always go as or have Spectre on the other lane, just uh, getting the farm. Yeah, ready to pop in in case anything pops off. Bottom lane pressure also going to be mounted by Vichy J while they can push out mid with Silar, And EG do finally claim that tier two tower in the bottom lane. Not yet. You said it too early. Oh, but I meant top catapult. lane, excuse me. Yeah. Right. Let's see if they can get it. Yes, they got it. They got it. So again, just trades off across the map. Going into the later stages of this, the next couple of minutes in the next Roche fight, um, wh where are you seeing each of the teams trying to put their priority? Are, are you worried at all about the pace of the game for either team? I think both teams are equally fine with going into super late game, especially the Spectre. She still needs a couple of more items to get online. Oh, Silar finds himself a misery. Stun is there. They're going to drop the Ravage. Maybe a bit bold. The follow-up is there, but they've already caught on to two. And Silar is going to pop his BKB, trying to run away. RTG is coming into this one as well. Wants to blow these guys up. Tusk left alone on an island with that silence. They're going to be able to find the kill. Magnetize onto several. They take it off of Silar immediately, but there's just not enough damage Woo! here. They take down three EG. Strike him back in a big way. And now they've also got the AA lifted up. Ayo, no let up to go. He's going to fall. And just like that, with no buybacks on hand, this could be a really dangerous spot. They don't have a tier 2 tower on top as well. 50 seconds. So they should be able to take uh, one side, one and a half side. This is no buybacks. They're, they're doing it right now. EG taking down the tier 3 tower after the glyph. The only one that has buyback right now is going to be the ancient apparition. And the Medusa can't walk in there and do this alone. Or can she? We'll see. It's a scary proposition, but EG taking down the towers. Five more seconds till Tusk. They don't know about the buyback status on this ancient apparition. The problem is uh, Spectre provides so much vision and cancels the dagger from a Legion commander, so she can't uh, initiate. I mean, the fight started well, but DK was too deep, and also his uh, Black King bar keeps dropping. It's only on six seconds now. Yeah, that is a little bit crazy how quickly that Black King Bar is worn down for the Dragonite. And now looking at it with Elena Barracks already dead, VGJ might need to reassess wh where can they go from here, really? I mean, do they need to try and make a move for Roshan themselves once it's back up? May respawn in one minute. So, so the Altis will be ready again for, for EG's. I, oh, that's not the play they want to 
they want to go for. Okay. Well, it looks like instead maybe get a little bit more map controls. They're pushing towards the mid tier two. Bottom tier two is being taken by Misery solo. When you can have a Warlock doing this, and well, he is going to die here for his trouble, but nonetheless, he took the tower in turn. Well, that's a 500 damage in pockets of Legion, plus uh, bonus. It's actually 18 damage because it's level 3. I'm not sure that's worth it. Yeah. On well, as the game goes later and later, we'll see what this Legion commander is going to be able to do right now in terms of the net worth of behind the Spectre by about 3,000 gold or so. You know, you know what's crazy? What's that? That Tidehunter is actually 200 below Medusa. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. Sumail has been farming like a champ, and he's going for a Refresher Orb next as well. That's uh, Boots of Travel there. Oh, excuse me. It just got it switched was, around. It was, yeah. Well, maybe EG feeling confident with themselves. And an Earth Spirit Aghanim Scepter is the other one that's on the docket for crit. He's only about 400 gold away from it if he wants to buy out. But it's a Beachy J Thunder Smoke as they're going to head towards mid, try and bait out, out the Medusa. Yeah. I think I talked today about the Spectre, how Radiance is not uh, the first item oh, on the crit. crit. He knew the whole time, but he's still going to be punished for this. Silar there, they find a kill. And that should be about the extent of it. Never mind, oh! jump forward. He manages to break the Lincoln Spear. There's the duel onto that P DP as well. And they're going to start to bring her down. They're going to be able to find the kill in just a second. Possibly the Ravage to turn it back around, though. They're taking them down slowly, but it's not quite enough. They're going to kill off the Tusk. They're going to kill off the Dusa. They're going to kill them all. BGJ Thunder fallen as they're getting set to push forward for more. Silar, is he going to be able to get out of there? I don't think so. Breaks the DP, does still have the Spirit Siphon, and that's going to be a full five-man wipe. I don't think that's uh, the way you want to start a fight, especially not on DP. Uh, she has a full AC, so sitting on 23 armor. And you know there's going to be a Warlock ulti coming if you duel her. Plus, oh. he was quite away from his team, so there was no follow-up damage. That was insane. And again, it looks so good at the start, but oh. then you buy back as well, and it's just all gone wrong. Arcane rune for a DP. And what what more in. can you ask for? There's no buyback right now on the DK. As they're getting ret and set to push for this bottom tier three tower, Arteezy hitting away. He's come online for sure now. As this tower is going to fall, they pop the exorcism. This is looking like game one might just be in the bag right now. VGJ Thunder are going to have to pull off a miracle at this stage as EG move through their base, taking tower after tower, and there is just no response at all. Sumail even took the 250 damage on the Tidehunter. Because why not, right? Absolutely. I mean, he's unkillable in, uh, in these fights, so he's dealing a lot of damage, has enough move speed to actually hit heroes. Wow. Spectre ends up going back and picking up the Radiance in the end, regardless of what we thought was going to be there. And now with an uh, 11,000 net worth lead and two lanes of barracks down, GJ Thunder are going to need more than a miracle. Since uh, DP picked up uh, Arcane Rune, the ult is ready in 45 seconds. So if they want to take a Roche right now, it would be... <laughs> Misery, just zoning them out oh, with yeah, the casual upheaval. That's the way to do it. No way to get into the Roche pit. We're going to hold off for you guys. But Silar still moving over this direction. He does still have that Silver Edge if they want to go in. Roche is available. And EG, with those ultis back up shortly, are going to move in for the kill. Oh, even. Earth Spirit finishes Aghanim Scepter, so Duel's not going to do anything. All right, the walk forward, the attempt to try and fight this one. Crit is there. They throw in the stun. Doesn't connect onto anybody, but they're able to get the blink. Pump makes the Ravage. Now gets it off after the fact. They found them all. They're stunned for the moment, though, by that Medusa ulti, but with the break there as well, they're starting to bring them down low. They get the kick out. They're keeping that Tidehunter alive, but they still end up losing Crit. Kama draining all that mana away, and Medusa trying to run, but there's nowhere left to go. They find the kick. They're still trying to take these guys down, but Fear is just dealing so much damage That's in this a fight. Good game. Four dead, and EG taken. They couldn't team fight against DP 
Tide Hunter, Spectre. I mean, Spectre at this moment uh, burns pretty much all mana on Medusa in a couple of hits with uh, Manta style plus Diffusal Blade. Oh, uh, look at their happy faces, huh? Yeah, Kurt looks real happy. They're, they're doing it. They're making it happen. Um, again, VGJ Thunder versus EG, the upper bracket finals. Winner of this is going to get a direct ticket to the grand finals. Lacoste, looking at that game number one, what's your thoughts for game number two? What if VGJ need to switch up? They need uh, something better than uh, promo code VGJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, my goodness gracious. I think they could not find the openings with... Uh, with Legion Commander after a certain point. Uh, draft was good, but didn't uh, really feel the influence of Medusa. I mean, that's the thing, right, is that you have all of these giant ultimates. Normally, you can take advantage of that, but uh, not the case because there was always at least one up, and that meant that yeah. they could just constantly take the fights that they wanted. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us here in game number one. We're going to head it back to the panel to see what they thought about that one. Thank you, they're, all, they're cool. Thank you very much, Lacoste. i got to say, that draft from EG, Absolutely crazy, but they pulled it off with the Battle Fury Spectre. Initially, I was just like, whose idea was it to give this offlaner an offlane hero? And then Lyrical, I mean, uh, Lacoste was just casually like, you know, it's just your standard run of the mill top net worth Tide Hunter, no big deal, don't worry about it. But Sumail, uh, it doesn't matter what hero you put him on, it seems. He'll make a hero that's not flashy, a flashy hero. Uh, it was just crazy, the plays he was making, he was getting kills on Medusa almost by himself. He had the Warlock come and help out in the top lane. I'm just like, all right, Ty just, you know, killing the enemy one just position. Like, what, what's happening? I think we're going to break this down, though. Let's start from the laning phase. What actually happened here? Um, EG had a really good laning phase. They kind of got off to a pretty good start, did their typical EG thing, which is get farm on all three core heroes. Except, uh, except Spectre. Well, even Spectre in the offline still did OK. Like, she did OK. But yeah. then, like, after she got that Battle Fury, it was kind of <laughs> That was where things went downhill after the Battle Fury. Like, right. The build of Battle Fury was like, all right, this is a good Spectre game. Battle Fury, you know, sure, sure, it'll work. Why not? Everyone's going Battle Fury. It's what all the cool kids are doing. And then he died twice in a row top with oh, Battle yeah. Fury. Then two minutes later, he dies in team fight. And it's like, oh. Legion well, Commander, that? meanwhile, keeps feeding yeah. dual victories off of Misery's Warlock. Yep. It, it, it was looking forward. good. Yeah. It, that, that, it looked like Arteezy was almost like, quote unquote, throwing the game right. in some ways. You know, he, that Battle Fury was backfiring. But they pulled it together. It was an investment, and it paid off in the end. And he ended up completing a Radiance in like the last two and a half minutes or so. But it was an unconventional build, one that we would have suspected, like, feared to build on a Spectre. But instead, Arteezy was building it, which is just another variable added into EG's versatility. Because now Fear was playing a Death Prophet. And if you just showed me these five heroes, I would have been like, OK, well, that's clearly a Sumail Death Prophet. And it's going to be like, you know, Fear Tidehunter or something like that. But I, I don't know how you draft against this team. That's the thing. How do you draft against them? We were saying VGJ Thunder's lineup would look great versus EG's, but then even with this lineup, they can't take on EG. So what do you use to play against them? And I feel like this is a stupid question because I don't even think you guys are going to be able to answer this. But overall, where did it collapse for VGJ Thunder? Some of their team fights, really, um, which is hard because you're up against high Death Prophet, where we're seeing I think more and more that Death Prophet is a hero that has been underpicked and underrated coming into a lot of the previous events, qualifiers. Like I just feel like Death Prophet, oh, I don't see that hero in any of these tournaments that are happening all the time. And here at this event, it's been a key hero constantly. Like it's winning team fights left, right, and center. It's taking objectives. It got EG Roshan. That was kind of the, to me, the big tipping point. They secure Roche with it, then VGJ kind of come in, try and take a fight. And it's not really going too well for them. And yeah, EG just kind of snowball from there. Play, they play around their cooldowns well. They have this tied Death Prophet, two very long cooldown ultimates, but they still manage to make sure that they didn't get punished during the downtime. Tsunami? It's not really often that in the previous EG drafts are like, oh, their team fight is exceptional. We just keep talking about like, oh, greedy cores, greedy cores, greedy cores. They keep getting farm. How do you, which core do you prioritize? This time, VGJ were prioritizing right. They kept going after Spectre. If you keep go after Spectre, then who's going to deal with Medusa? But after that little period of time that they had superiority with Yang's Legion Commander, yet again, we see the Legion Commander kind of lose relevance as the game progresses on. Medusa never really got that intimidating. Kama ended the score with a 1-7, uh, ended the game with a 1-7-6 score, and he had a lot of farm. He had a Daedalus completed on the Medusa, but somehow Evil Genius's Battle Fury Spectre ended up coming out superior. Yeah, and even the, the Dragonite of Siler, like ends the game with eight deaths as well. It just felt like these 
what are meant to be tanky cores on the VGJ side are uh, proven very actually easy to bring down by EG. Uh, Death Prophet Ultimate, every single time it was used with, with Tides Ravage, was like dead Dragonite, dead Medusa. I mean, it was Gush armor reduction, Assault QS armor reduction. They didn't even have yep. like a uh, Solar Crest or anything, but it just made the DK look like paper. This is also, uh, this is also the, I think, the second time, or is it the third time? Second time, Ancient Apparition. Twice today, Twice it's today. been picked and lost. Both games it was against like a Death Prophet. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the AA's performance so far? Because we've seen a lot of teams, they've used it versus the Death Prophet and Warlock combination. I think AA was a shining point of their draft this game almost. It set up a lot of kills. Damage-wise, it did... Look at Medusa's damage, 7.2k. AA did 6.8. Yeah, it's substantial, but um, at the same time... I think time, that speaks more to Medusa underperforming than AA being great. Though. Right, because... AA did do great, but like the question is, most other supports would be able to do the same thing. Like, did we really see Ice Plus mitigate that many heals? It didn't really feel like it. Like, obviously, Warlock's Shadow yeah. Ward is kind of an invisible heal, but more often than not, I think Misery was just like, well, whatever. If I'm Ice Plus, if my teammate's Ice Plus, I'm just going to use it offensively. Seems like they needed more like a big team fight, fight position on right. the EG side. You've got this Warlock, Rock, Fatal Bonds, Upheaval doing wonders in these fights. Medusa's actually not that great against Warlock. You're getting slowed, you can't move around. Um, and that's where maybe those five positions, like your disruptors, need to be considered more. Your Rastas, yeah. If he was banned, we don't know which ones are banned. Yep. But <laughs> MVP Sumail. Um, well deserved. Very good performance on on his Tide Hunter. Agreed. I don't think you normally see XP and GPM that high on a Tide Hunter typically. No. No. That is. Most people would see this and be like, they messed up the hero portrait. <laughs> did it again. Yeah, I mean, you've got a Tide solo killing Medusa. This Medusa ends the game with 7k hero damage, and Sumail's, I think, the prime, one of the big primary reasons for that. So very, very strong showing from EG. The question now is, what now for VG Gaming? Tsunami, I what do you think? I didn't know in game <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know in game two. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a game three. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did support EG, so I think that's the only positive so far. That's true. <laughs> All right, so for now, we're going to head on over for a quick commercial break. But once we're back, we're going to jump into game two. Can Beachy Gaming Thunder make it through? We'll find out. <laughs> 